Welcome to the Fit Fathers Podcast. Uh, today we're going to talk about a little bit more of a serious uh, subject matter than we've covered in the past and maybe in a little bit more detail. Um, I think it's really topical though for 2020 in particular, um, and that's the topic of depression and anxiety and the underlying disorders and how you know if you have a disorder when it comes to depression or anxiety. Um, but before we get into it, um, just real quick, we'll, we'll do our, our check-in on, on family matters. Um, so how are things, Rob? How's the last week been? Are you having any, um, any success with the boy? Good sleeping, really good sleeping, um, for like the last, for like four out of the five last nights. And then last night wasn't good, but, um, no, I'll take it. It's, it's, it's much better. I'm getting like seven hours sleep per night, sometimes eight. So it's just amazing. First time in years. I bet you feel fantastic. Yeah, I can't wait. Uh, So that's made me uh, think, what the hell am I doing? I'm trying to uh, go on a calorie deficit. Let's let's just make the most of these like three months I've got until the next baby arrives. While I'm able to sleep, while I'm able to go to the gym, let's just eat as much food as possible and uh, get big if I can. (laughs) Although it doesn't, that disclaimer, it doesn't take three months. yeah, it's better than nothing. Yeah, for sure. Well, <laughs> I mean, who knows? Maybe if you're lucky, you'll, you'll still be able to carry that momentum for a little while into the baby too. I mean, if I'm lucky, depends. I might gain a hundred grams of muscle. Yeah, a hundred grams. <laughs> more, more if you eat eggs, according to the false picture I tweeted the other day. Um, yeah. How are you? How's things with you? You know what? I I've got kind of a similar success story. My my son's sleeping through the night. Uh, a lot better, I think. And um, my wife is kindly uh, covering me to sleep in longer in the mornings the way I prefer. So I'm back on a kind of a, on a rhythm that works great for me. So I've been getting a lot more sleep and I've just been smashing PRs in the gym all week, feeling, feeling like, uh, like a million dollars. I, this is what real sleep feels like. It's it's been so long. I I didn't even remember. Um, So I guess, uh, same same thing feeling pretty good gonna take advantage of it while while it's here amazing i, I love that i can just you, you just you record these podcasts in the gym i can see two barbells and two squat racks in the background yeah i've got uh three benches two of which incline you got two racks uh some bands a weight tree a landmine uh attachment a multi-grip handle uh some other odds and ends fat grips what's next stuff like that. what's next uh i i think I'm probably gonna get like a like a glute ham station next might get pulleys don't know i haven't really mm-hmm. decided that's very interesting i've yeah. got a question what's that um would you rather only be able to use barbells for the rest of your life or only be able to use dumbbells that's a boring question. I don't know. I may, I'll, I'll try and get better at these. I'm going to start asking you these questions. I'll try and get better. I'll okay. Make them funny. <laughs> it wasn't very funny. <laughs> well, um, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I would say barbells anyway. Um, yeah. It's tough though because there are things that I prefer the dumbbells for to barbells. Uh, I, like classic example today, I, I wanted to try to do some incline uh, barbell bench press, but none of my benches really fit in my racks in a way that makes that uh, like a safe um like a safe exercise it's hard to get into a position where i'm on the bench in a sturdy way and i can lift off nicely so i really just hate doing it um so i just generally just default to using my dumbbells but i guess if i had a better setup i would just use the, the barbell so. yeah i i think i'd go with barbells um if i had to choose one because so i can do you can do everything with it whereas if once you get to a certain level um of advancedness um working out your lower body with dumbbells is just not as not as good um you can't really do it as effectively as you can with a barbell where you can just load up weight yeah especially if you've also got a power rack too like it's true for upper body too um it, get, yeah. it gets at a certain point really really difficult to get into position with heavy heavy dumbbells safely you know and then you got to worry about you know if you got to worry about dropping them and things like that depending on, on your workspace but if you've got a power rack of course you know, you can just, you could just go for all the way for the glory and you don't have to worry too much because yep. 
I mean, I pinned myself under the barbell today and I had to do the, oh, sh- the shimmy of shame out from underneath it. Um, but you I mean, I was like, fine. Roll it, roll it down. No, no, no. I like it. I've got, it just so happens that the way the pins are set, the bar just barely presses on my chest uh, when it's all the way down. The pins. Okay. Yeah. So I got, I failed and then I had to like wriggle under yeah. the bar. <laughs> Oh, I've done it in I've done it a few times in the gym, like with pe- lots of people there uh, on incline as well. And I often have to use the incline bench where um, it's not in a it's not in a power rack. It's just a fixed bench, and there's no pins. You can't oh. add pins. Um, and like I often train on that. I'll go for like twelve reps, um, and I'm normally like I'll go for it if I even if I'm not 100 percent sure of getting the sort of the twelve reps um and there's times when like on the 11th one i'm like i don't think i'm going to get this 12th one and i go for it anyway but because it's 12 reps it's a light enough weight that it's not going to kill me um i'll just have to like let it roll down my chest because it's incline as well it easily rolls and then i have to kind of just stand up but it's embarrassing (laughs) because then you have to just put it on the floor and unload it and put it back on yes yeah depending on when somebody walked by you were doing that you would look like you were foolish not like you were yeah not like you were um (laughs) dedicated to giving it your best but more like you just don't know your limit um yeah, I, it's easy if, to mistake those on... two right sorry i said it's easy to mistake those things like to think yeah, oh you're yeah. just a foolish guy who way overshot versus somebody who likes to train really close to failure and just sometimes yeah that doesn't work out for you which making it relevant um i i this is often when i was training close to failure all the time just because i was only doing like a maximum of five sets across my whole workout because that's all I had time for. So I had to really make sure I was pushing it to keep progressing. And uh, yeah, a lot of the time I didn't quite make it on the, on that last rep. Um, but that was one of the reasons why I was choosing incline as well, because um, one, um, I only had a very limited amount of time in the gym. So um, the incline bench station was usually more available than the flat. Um, so it was more likely that I'd be able to get in and do my actual plan. I hate it when I get there and you have to wait around. And when you've only got 20 minutes, that's just not, there's no time for waiting around. Um, and then if I did get pinned under it, um, it's the weight is going to be lighter because it's incline. Um, and also um, it's easier to get it off you. Um, and um, yeah, also I, I needed to focus on something else as well because um, I'd never really focused that much on incline. So there was some easy low hanging fruit there. Anyway, we're going to kind of going off on a tangent. Yeah. But yeah. It's all good. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I can't say that it had anything to do with me going for some high rep number or anything. I, I, I failed hitting. I hit a two rep PR and I got I got greedy and went for a third rep. Right, <laughs> didn't make that it. That would have been huge. Three three rep PR is massive. It was close. I almost got it. That's how much difference sleep makes. I hit a five yeah, rep PR. Sure. Then I hit a two rep PR that was almost a three rep PR, and then I hit a sixteen rep PR, back to back to back today. Six, sorry, when when you were saying a two rep and a three rep PR, I was thinking you mean you added three reps to your previous best. No, I mean like you, two you mean, rep max. Oh, that's right. Okay. Now like I'm so, previous two rep max. Sixteen, yeah. it made no sense. No. Um, <laughs> yeah. So like I I hit a new five rep best, and Got then it. I hit a, yeah. a new two rep best, and I almost hit three, <laughs> and then I and then I hit a sixteen rep right after it. Like, like this is back to back to yeah. back and that's I have all admit, that's changed is sleep. I've get an extra sleep. That's all that has changed. I don't know what my 16 rep maxes are. <laughs> I know it's because in fit notes, it will tell you if it's, if it's your best uh, which yeah, I for use sure. as well. And if anyone else is out there uh, looking for a good way to track their, their, um, their workouts, no affiliation at all, but, um, Shane got me onto fit notes and, um, yeah, I really like it. It's so simple. It gives you all the data you need about your lifting and helps you keep progressing week to week. It's really good. Yep. Um, and just actually something you were talking about um, with the dumbbells. Um, I'm actually focusing a, more on dumbbells at the moment, but now I'm finding it awkward, especially with seated dumbbell press and incline dumbbell press, getting them into position. But because I've I focused on barbells for so long, um, my right side has always been stronger and it's just always been doing a bit more work than my left side. And I definitely have some imbalances there. Like when I flex my triceps and, and feel it with my hand it feels significantly bit bigger on my right side um and delts as well um so the dumbbells will help to even that out i hope but i'm not seeing it yet uh, but it will take a while 
Yeah, you just highlighted exactly why you can't really pick one or the other, right? Yeah. Because you're you you know it's great for a theoretical question, but at the end of the day, it's like they they both have their pros and their cons, and you'd be yeah, missing exactly. you'd be missing out on some valuable stuff either way. So, I mean, in a, in a perfect world, you you know you would have. I'd say both of those. Like when somebody's like, "Well, what what equipment can I do without?" You know what I always say? Kettlebells. Hmm. People, yeah, like ready, ready. I don't, just... I don't have a problem with kettlebells, but I don't have any, and I never have, and I have never missed them. Um, no. You you can do a lot of the basic kettlebell stuff, the things that kettlebells are are used for. You can usually do all that stuff with dumbbells. Most of it. I mean, there are things where kettlebells are superior to dumbbells, but it's very specific. Yeah, so, and um. I, when I first, this is a bit of a story time again, but um, when I was first getting into the gym, um, this was in 2014, um, and a personal trainer in the gym came up to me and uh, had to like take me aside and say, look, I'm not trying to just sell you here, but you need to be careful because you're, you're going to hurt yourself. Like, cause I, I was, my form was bad. Um, and so I ended up signing up with him. Um, just for, for some group sessions um, I couldn't really afford to pay whatever it was for a one-on-one -on -one coaching in a gym at that time um, but I did pay for group sessions um, in the gym with like five other people and he was a, like a, a certified kettlebell guy um, and he was like from Eastern Europe and they like, they seem to really like kettlebells over there um, yep. and he got us all learning how to do everything with kettlebells first um, so the first time I did proper squats was with kettlebells the first time i learned how to deadlift was with kettlebells um and i did like it was quite useful f um for learning those patterns at the beginning um i found it easier than jumping straight in with barbells um and maybe it was also the teaching but um yeah I, I liked it as a beginner and also doing the kettlebell swing um helped me to learn um the hip hinge movement which is you know fundamental to deadlifts and pretty useful in squats as well um so yeah kettlebells have their place but since then i, I don't use them I, i've never used them yeah yeah, yeah i get maybe a handful of times ever and i, I know people you know, really like um turkish get-ups for for shoulder strength and um building like really strong shoulders but um i i have never really done those i can't do them like like i i don't i'm not even 100 percent sure how to do it it's never something i've, I've practiced so um yeah i, I would be a complete beginner if i tried to do that now yeah i keep th i keep threatening to start doing those but for some reason i just never do um but you can do those with a dumbbell i've seen i've seen videos yeah. people doing them with dumbbells. so that that's the thing that's like um you know if you have to choose one or the other then i gotta say i think for basic like strength and hypertrophy work dumbbells are more versatile than kettlebells like they you, you where whereas you can often for that kind of work you can often substitute a dumbbell for a kettlebell it's not always the reverse that's true like like kettlebells yeah. would be i i imagine anyway just based on the shape they'd be awkward to do heavy pressing with for instance yeah so a kettlebell um if you were going to do an, an overhead press with a kettlebell um 30 kilos with a kettlebell is not the same as 30 kilos with a dumbbell because um the weight's not centered in your palm it's out, outside your hand um which makes it really unstable um which means it's harder um yep. so yeah there, there's that element to kettlebells because you it, think oh well, uh, this this will be easy because i know i can overhead press and then you try and do it with the kettlebell and it's like, oh that's that's hard yeah but if you're doing something like rows right like a chest supported rows yeah. a great example a kettlebell dumbbell is not going to make terribly much more di no. difference because the the load is all still just going like straight up and down against gravity right yeah um and you, your hands would be in the same basic position and your, therefore your arms and everything else kettlebells if it like if you like them great definitely i'm not not against kettlebells i've never never missed having them i have a you know i've accumulated all kinds of stuff in my gym but i've just never thought you know kettlebells not worth it and and i think the biggest thing comes down to the fact that they're expensive like you're paying significant money and you would need a decent, you know, a decent variety of kettlebells to serve all purposes. Like, like I don't want to drop like $80 for one kettlebell that I can only use that specific load. It just, you know, then I would have to get a bunch and then they would take up a bunch of space. And I just never really saw much likelihood that it would be worth the, the investment. Yeah, and gym gym equipment is uh, not cheap. Um, so, no, whatever you yeah, buy, you want to use it. You want it to. You want yeah. the uh, 
the dollar investment relative to the time that you get to use it for to to be really stacked in your favor because then it is cheap right like spend a couple yeah. thousand dollars on gym equipment but you use it a hundred times a year 120 times a year um in a few years it was mere cents per time that you went down to work out so then it then it is um cheaper but if you buy something for a hundred bucks and it just sits there and collects dust in your gym then that's a hundred dollars that you could have just either bought something that would be more actually useful to what you do for your training or help you along in some way or just save that money to invest in other things in your life i think um if you if you live somewhere where um if you live somewhere that's densely populated facebook marketplace and ebay are great for filling up your gym because people um buy things that they never use and then they just want it out of the way um and they'll they'll take make huge losses on it and you can pick up stuff which is absolutely perfect in, in, in great condition for really cheap and then if you know you can you can then sell stuff on as well um and you haven't really lost much value on it yeah absolutely yeah that's a that's anyway. a huge tip if you're somewhere if you're somewhere where there's there's lots of lots of people you just keep your your eye on the sales check them frequently uh sometimes somebody will have like power rack barbells bunch of weights you know nice brand name like rogue or something like that and it'll be yeah. like yeah eight hundred dollars or best offer something like that and it's just a matter of being on top of it and you can get a real I saw, that. I saw that the other day i saw that the other day um guy was just it, it, he had as much stuff as you probably have and he just had it all just put out on his garden like on on his lawn um and i took a picture of all of it it's just loads of stuff I, I don't know what why but um yeah it was all going um and obviously i have nowhere to put it but i would have been all over that um yeah yeah that was probably painful for you <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. <laughs> see that opportunity and you couldn't take it yeah i mean totally when i see that when i see somebody's got like a really expensive barely used power rack and like all the good stuff and it's like yeah i'll i'll, I'll sell all this for fifteen hundred dollars and i'm just like oh my god if only i had found this you know five years ago would have saved me would have saved me money and i'd have an even nicer gym but <laughs> is what it is yeah um so yeah so uh, i guess we should probably we'll get into the uh we'll get into the meat of it now now that we've uh now that we've explained yeah. to everybody their best options my, for how my, to uh, my random question spawned a whole discussion which in the end probably may have been may have been valuable but yeah yeah possibly um w whatever we'll uh i'm sure we'll we'll see one way or another uh people probably want to know that stuff honestly a lot of people want to get gyms right and they don't necessarily know what to look for what's a good value i actually i get dms about it all the time hey i'd like to build a home gym like what do you what do you suggest i invest my money in and that's pretty much what i just said like get a power rack get some barbells get some adjustable dumbbells so get some mats it's a great start i find that really interesting because um i mean it makes complete sense it's obvious why but i never get dms about that um i, I get some quite weird dms so i mean I, I guess i must come across as a guy that likes weird stuff and you come across as a guy with a home gym um so <laughs> maybe there's that but no i just find it interesting that um people don't see us all as the same on twitter whereas uh you know definitely not they're, definitely not yeah they're, they're, they are re recognizing the specialist knowledge um which which is interesting i do wonder about stuff like that because I, I get a lot of dms about usually it's people wanting to lose fat and you know sometimes they say they'll i'll even pay you um if you if you help me which which tickles me wow that's great <laughs> um okay so um today's topic was uh anxiety and depression and i actually uh got an official government pamphlet oh that my health service had a hard copy. Oh yeah. I have a hard copy. I saw the, the digital version. Yeah. Um, and this was put out by, um, Alberta health services actually. So this is my local, like my regional health authority. Um, and this is from 2017. So it's reasonably current. Um, a lot of the research that's cited in the back is it, it's basically all from this decade so it, rel relatively current stuff and it's about uh a toolkit to self-manage depression and anxiety so the reason i thought this might be relevant is that um i'm seeing a lot of people talk about their struggles with this stuff these days uh, especially during um the lockdown period 
that was very hard on a lot of people. Um, regular coping mechanisms were removed. And so the pressure on people who were already maybe having a hard enough time coping with these issues was only increased. And there was really no, no escaping that. So that that's definitely a consideration that I think a lot of people are, are dealing with right now. And if that's the case, I would like to I would like to maybe identify some ways that people can help themselves. Apparently, depression and anxiety are first of all, they're it's common. Like everybody or most people will deal with some degree of of severe like symptomatic depression or anxiety at some point in their life. It isn't a disorder though, unless it unless it meets certain criteria. Common symptoms are things like you can't sleep, uh, you're sluggish and inactive, you get sick or run down, you have no energy, uh, you have unexplainable headaches or muscle pains, maybe upset stomach, loss of interest in sex, decreased appetite, you stay away from the places and people and friends that you normally associate with, you have trouble making decisions or concentrating, uh, you have trouble finishing projects. Um, you're using substances to make you feel better. You feel overwhelmed, helpless, irritable, restless, agitated, useless, um, or inadequate, um, or just plain unhappy and sad or empty and numb all the time, maybe a bit frustrated. Um, it can manifest a little bit different for different people, but generally if, if you're kind of um, fixated on those kinds of emotions or behaviors, that's a sign that you have, you have some depression. Um, and it becomes a disorder when the symptoms don't get better or get worse. Uh, and the feelings stop you from doing normal things that you normally do. So like a great example, would be like you stop working out or you stop going to work or you don't go to family functions or you start skipping out on regular meetups with your friends. Um, and it says if you have depressive symptoms every day for at least two weeks, you it has become a disorder. And then anxiety is kind of similar. It's a feeling of worry, nervousness, unease. Um, and, you know, it's normal to have anxiety because stressful situations, they get our they get us worked up. We get into like a fight or flight kind of mode and anxiety is is a part of that feeling like you know, tense and like your chest is tight and, and those kinds of physiological things that people experience. Um, but it becomes a disorder if it lasts weeks or months, or if you have a constant sense of dread that affects your everyday life, or if the symptoms don't go away when the stress goes away. So the thing that triggered anxiety, that finishes, you're still dealing with the actual symptoms of anxiety for a long time afterwards. That's a sign you got a disorder that needs to be dealt with. Yeah. An example of that would be uh, people who've been in war zones um, who have post-traumatic stress disorder. That is a type of anxiety. Um, the, they're no longer in the war zone, but they still have the constant worry and um, fear, even though it's now an irrational worry and fear. But um, yeah, I mean, I can't talk too much like I'm an authority on this because I'm not. Um, but that's just an example of, of a type of anxiety because, you know, the, the thing causing the stress is gone, but they're, they're affected for life often. Yep. And then there would be lots of coping, uh, coping techniques and stuff that would be necessary to deal with that and probably, you know, therapy and, and who knows what else. So this is going to be strategies you can use to maybe mitigate these kinds of issues. And I ran a poll on Twitter and I had a number of questions and I got a pretty decent sample size. Um, hundreds of people answered each of these questions. So it's not like this is a small sample. Got, got spread fairly far and wide. The first question was on a typical night I sleep and it was a, a number of listings. And even though, you know, probably most of the people that follow me at least have an awareness of the importance of sleep. They have, uh, and, the, and they have an awareness of um, the health impact of it. And even still, only 67% of the respondents said they slept um, over, oh, sorry, 67% of the respondents said they slept under 8.5 hours. That sounds pretty good, right? Except for that human beings need seven to nine hours of sleep, generally. 
speaking per day. So a good number, if they're all on the top end of this, there's a good number of people in that 67% weren't getting enough sleep. Sorry, I don't understand. 67% sleep for less than eight and a half hours a day. Yeah, but more than six. Sorry, I should have clarified, but more oh, than okay. six. I get, uh, now I get it, yeah. Okay. So, so uh, Probably I, closer to six. Clo probably closer to six is my guess, a lot of them. Yeah. So even, even if we assume that all of them were close to eight and a half hours, and that's 67%, out of the 67% that had the best score on this poll, some of those people are sleep deprived. Yeah. But there's a good 33% more people that, that rated themselves under that. Under six hours, 23%. Under 4.5 hours, 4%. Four out of 100 people on here, they sleep less than four and a half hours on a typical night. No, that, that's like, if I get a, a night like that, um, I, I'll feel dreadful the next day. And yeah. if it carries on for long, I'm going to start having health problems uh, like i've been through that um you know when it's forced on you in those crazy first few months after having a child and um yeah you, you start losing it um and yeah you're just not the same person so that's sleep okay so we, we we've checked one of these and we're i'm going to circle back to why this is important for depression and anxiety in a minute specifically so sleep that was, you know, some people are doing okay, but definitely an area of opportunity for a significant percentage of the people that did this poll. And I think it, they are not representative of the norm. I think that on the average, they're probably doing better. That, that would be my impression. So the second question yep. is, and this one, I had to kind of, this question doesn't reflect a specific standard given in this, um, in this pamphlet exactly, but I kind of, uh, I worked one backwards out of it and also based on what I already know from um, my readings and my studying regarding exercise and, and appropriate amounts of activity for health and stuff during the week. So it kind of tied in some of my own knowledge to this, but it says I get 2.5 plus hours of moderate to vigorous physical activity each week. 66% of respondents said yes. Two and a half or more hours of moderate to vigorous exercise. I'm Seven, surprised by that. Seventeen percent said no, and seventeen percent said more than three hours. So probably around a fifth of the people are doing pretty well. You know, twenty of people who of follow people me who saw your tweet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or follow me or saw my tweet through people that retweeted it. Yeah, um, yeah who are also probably like you. Um, you know, in, in that you know, they're people that are interested in fitness because they someone who follows you retweeted it or something yeah it's certainly so it's, biased towards a healthier mindset anyway is my thought yeah. um and then the third question was i eat a protein rich primarily whole food diet and the answer was 81 percent. yes although i didn't define what protein rich meant um yeah. there's still whole food diet some that's people... yeah you know what i'm saying here there might be some I, I wonder what some people think a whole food diet and a protein rich diet is, but, but yeah, I, 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 it's still probably going to be a high, you know, even if it's not quite 81% because some people are wrong and what they think is a high protein whole food diet, it's still quite high, probably still pretty, pretty good. And 12% said no, and 7% said unsure. So at least 7% of people admitted they really didn't know what that meant. Which uh, is good in its in its own right, I think, um, and and says that there'll be some value in explaining what that's about. And then the third and final question was, I interact with other people in person daily. And eighty one percent of people said yes, but I had a lot of questions like, does my spouse count? Do my children count? And I mean, yeah, technically based on what I asked, but. Got to ask yourself, you see, see the same two or three people every single day and only those people, is that an adequate amount of social interaction for a healthy human being? I don't know. That That's maybe yeah. beyond my pay and grade. if you think about it, your spouse and your kids, those are the people who have been most indoctrinated by your worldview. Um, so yep. everything is kind of an echo chamber in that situation, um, unless your kids are rebels. but. Um, <laughs> You know, you're not getting like 
completely different views you're not getting exposed to different types of people that you maybe don't get on with you know you have to um, exercise different aspects of your personality to to deal with different people yeah absolutely and so okay so then this brings me around to to the the point of this I'm going to reference the official literature to make this argument in a second but so imagine you're one of the 20 percent of people that said no i don't see anybody on a daily basis and you're one of the oh i missed a question haha <laughs> i knew there was something missing okay i abstain from alcohol or drugs at least two full days in a week right 22 percent of people said they fully abstain 10 percent said no 68 percent said yes it was a fairly low standard in my opinion to ask that somebody do, you, go two out of seven days without drinking or doing drugs i wonder if people understand i don't know firstly are you counting nicotine are you counting caffeine or are you meaning um yeah this is self-reporting like, this is why self-reported data isn't super reliable but it's still an interesting barometer right because yeah i didn't clarify because what i meant by that so self-serving or selective memory in self-reporting even allowing for that 10 percent of people said no one in 10 people doesn't take two days off of drugs even when you let them define that however they like yeah yeah because uh, even if something's legal um it doesn't mean it can't contribute to anxiety and depression you know right i'm, I'm sure um i know i know for a fact that a high caffeine intake um contributes to anxiety yeah or can it, not helpful anyway yeah exactly not, not not to not to hate on caffeine i mean I, i've i've drunk coffee for years but you know a high amount of it and if you are already predisposed to anxiety then it's, it's something you'd want to cut down you just reminded me of still have some coffee to drink. Okay, so yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, I know this is a serious topic, but if we don't laugh a little bit about it, it'll be kind of grim. So yeah. Um, okay, so let's say like 10% is very generous, but still. You, okay, so now you're in the 10% of people that never takes a day off or in a typical week doesn't take a day off drugs or alcohol. You don't interact with other people. You maybe, maybe do or don't eat a protein-rich, whole food-based diet. There's a good chance you also don't get enough exercise, not even moderate exercise, much less vigorous exercise. And there's a very good chance you're underslept chronically. The sleep alone is a killer. I mean, any new parent could tell you. That if you go two, three hours a night less sleep than you than you need to function well, and you do that for months on end, you're a walking shell of yourself. Just just on sleep, we're not even addressing any of these other issues, and and that's already a huge problem. So how does that tie back in? Well, okay. So in here they have self management strategies for dealing with depression or anxiety, and it talks about some of the things you should address substance use right so what does it say about the substance use it says if the harmful effects of substance abuse happen slowly they damage your body they change your brain's ability to deal with negative feelings and they make it likely you'll have more negative feelings like anger aggression sadness anxiety depression this can be caused by alcohol, prescription medicine, over-the-counter medicine, or illegal drugs. You build up a tolerance over time. So if you've been using it as a coping mechanism, and even if it worked for you initially, odds are pretty good you're going to need to use more and more. And then all the negative effects get more pronounced, right, over time, because you need more just to get whatever the positive effect was. And I talk about this from time to time with people, I say, so I'm not an anti-drugs guy. I'm not an anti, you know, I, I don't tell people they shouldn't ever drink or anything like that. I think, I think that's uh, unrealistic, maybe a bit silly and not necessary for everybody. So, you know, I'm not a blanket of, of abolitionist about basically anything, but I think it's really important people know the difference between a vice and an addiction. And the way I define a vice is a vice is a way you let off a little bit of needed stress like costs do not outweigh 
the the benefit as an outlet. Um, if if your use of a of an of a substance or an activity is a net negative in your life, that and you and you still continue to do it, that's an addiction. Like, and that's got to go because that's that's going to make your situation a lot worse. Yeah, I agree. Um, like for for example, for me, um, I don't uh, I don't really drink. I'm going to sound so boring now and people are going to hate me. But I don't really drink. Um, I don't smoke. Just just to, to clarify on that, I don't really drink. I, I can't remember the last time I had an alcoholic drink. I may have had one in the last year. I may, I've probably had about five in the last three years. Um, I don't uh, take any drugs. Um, but I, I, I'll eat... I'll eat chocolate, you know, I'll, I'll destroy cookies. Um, I don't talk about this too much on Twitter because well, firstly, it's not what people who need help who follow me need to hear. Um, secondly, um, I'll get attacked by everyone um, because you can't say that sort of stuff. <laughs> and um, thirdly, it's, it's a little bit, I don't know, maybe maybe there's some, some element of shame in it. Um, feeling like oh I, sh- I shouldn't i shouldn't do this but for me it doesn't provide a net negative in my life uh, and i'm not uh, let, let's be honest um it's not it's not a ridiculous amount you know I, i'm mostly eating um healthy diet but i'd say probably on some days 20 percent of my calories are not from healthy foods um and usually most days I'm, I'll, I'll have most days i'll have something it's usually in the evening and that that is one of those, like you say, it's something that just takes off a bit of stress, a bit of needed, a little bit of needed enjoyment. And I don't have any other vices in my life, you know, like, like I need something. Yeah. Um, Everybody's got to enjoy least, it. I don't trust anybody who says they don't have any vices. And then, and then I, I you know, I, I go and work out, I'm active, I go and walk around a lot and play with my son and, you know, and I, I, I watch what I weigh. Um, you know, if I notice I'm, I'm putting on weight too fast, I'll dial it back. And then I can, I can go through a period of, of months where I limit it a lot more um, and then go back to where I need to be, uh, you know, and blood work and everything is all fine. So I don't think I'm having any, um, there's, it's not a net negative in my life. So I wouldn't call it an addiction in my case. And I, I can go long periods without it, but yeah, that's a vice. But yeah. then there are people who I have had an addiction. I've had an addiction to it um, in the past. I'd say I probably was addicted. Um, and I used it. I used it as a as a as a way to um, to to make myself feel happy, um, and I would eat, the amounts we're talking were much higher, and I was drinking. Um, my main one was was Coke, like um, like the the sugary version. Um, I, if I have it now, it's only zero. Um, but I used to go through huge bottles of the, the you know the the, the sugar one. Like with the red label, um, like easily do four liters of that in an evening. Um, just that's two of the big bottles. Um, you know, sitting playing Call of Duty or FIFA or something, um, and and at the same time going through you know bars of chocolate, big ones. And I, it's, it's a wonder I wasn't bigger, but I, I was playing sport at the time. I was still young. I was still playing sport. Um, but yeah, I was addicted. I'd say. Um, yeah. And that I, was, I that would was agree hundred percent on that when I was there too. Uh, I used to yeah. famously say that Coca-Cola owned my soul. And I thought that was, <laughs> I thought that was funny at the time. I don't think it's so funny yeah. in retrospect. Um, it's pretty true. I mean, I, I used to guzzle liters of it every week, like just tons and tons. And that, you know, that's just as destructive probably, especially over the long haul as smoking or, um, drinking too much, which I also used to do. Um, so I sympathize, like, like I, I'm an open book on this. You actually hit on something really important there. You said, you don't talk about, um, uh, about this on Twitter. And one of the reasons that you said you don't talk about it is like fear of judgment and attack. And I think, and shame. And I think that that's, uh, that's a big part of the problem. We got a lot of people that are legitimately struggling, especially this year. I've never seen so many people struggling with this kind of stuff and they can't talk about it because if they talk about it, all the people who could help them, all they've got for them is heaps of shame. Right. Yeah. Right. 
you know yeah that's that's, uh, a, that's a point you've got a great point there I, I don't like that. Like, I don't like it at all. I haven't liked it for a while. I don't like I don't like uh, online coaches talking about how weak and pathetic everybody is. It's like if that's all you got to offer, maybe just shut up. Like, who's who is out there who needs help? You know, who's, this, I was thinking earlier. You know, you described just like you say like ten percent of the people who answered your survey. I was thinking, well, those those are the ten percent of people who follow you who aren't um, another online coach. They're not. A fitness guy who just wants to follow all the fitness guys which is what a lot of our followers are you know they're just they're pe never people that are going to be clients because because no. they're just following all the fitness guys because that's what they want in their feed there's the 10 percent of people who are following us because they're hoping that one day something we say will spark them to make a change or you know they'll see something that that motivates them and how is saying oh um you know I think I saw I saw a post the other day which said something like, um, "You want to you want to be fit, you know, you you want to have a six pack, but you you're addicted to sugar and and you I don't know something else and something else." And at the end, it just said, "Fuck off!" <laughs> like after after this that describing this person, and then it just said, "Fuck off." And I was just like, wow, that's, that's, that's a bit of a strange tweet. Um, but, you know, how's that going to help anyone? Um, it's just literally there so that it will get engagement from the other 90% the of people um, who will, you know, like agree with it and be like, yeah, sugar is terrible and people who love it are morons. Yeah, here's um, that attention you ordered and all those pats on the back. Yeah. Congratulations. Exactly. That's You're not helping anybody who actually needs it, though. The people who actually need it yeah. don't need to be told that they're failing. And that they're, and they know, they know. They, yeah, they, they know, they know they're, they're, they're they drowning. Shouldn't. Give them a hand. Yeah. Don't push your head, their head under. Give them a hand. I, yeah, it. Not a fan. Not a fan of that style of motivation. Not a fan of that that way of getting attention. I think it's it's beyond overdone. And this is this is a year where a lot of people could use a little compassion and help. So maybe maybe we could head in that direction a little bit as a community. Um, imagine if. Instead of being uh, really worried about self-aggrandizing and, you know, being the guy with the most followers on Twitter or whatever, people actually just genuinely tried to figure out how to actually reach the people that needed them the most and offered them useful help, like life strategies. Um, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a definitely an issue. And you just nailed it with the whole, you can't talk about it because somebody's going to be on you because th they're going to feel personally attacked that you eat sugary food. It's not about you. If you're fine with your special diet that works for you, you've already licked this problem. Great. Let, let's have a multitude of valuable strategies out there that people can grab a hold of because they might not take to yours. They might not take to mine. They might take to Rob's, right? So Instead of shouting down every single person who doesn't do it exactly your way, let's just all have these viable paths out of this darker place that people can take. And they can grab a hold of whichever one fits them best. Or they could try. They could try a few. And then something's bound to take. So let's let's make it less of a zero sum game and more of a like, you know, let's let's just reach the most people. Let's pull the most people up. Because we live in a society surrounded by these people. So their success is our success. At the end of the day, would you like, would you want to be the only winner in a room full of 99 people that are drowning at life? Hmm. Is, is that going to be a good, fun environment to be surrounded by? No. Who are going to be your friends? Who are going to be your neighbors? Who are your children going to marry? Stop thinking about only about yourself, right? Start thinking about how you can help everybody. That's... Uh, that's that's my two cents on that. Sorry, I kind of yeah. got on my soapbox, but I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and remember um, this conversation when I'm writing tweets uh, because it is sometimes easy to get sucked into that trap of writing what we call um, engagement crack um, <laughs> because <laughs> uh, you know it, it's like dopamine seeing the likes and the retweets and oh look. Today, today, thirty people followed me. You know, and yep. um, but that's not what's important, and I need to remember that. Um, I was, you know, I feel like I feel like um, most of the time I, I I'm okay and do pretty well at just offering 
help uh, or like at least useful content. Uh, yeah, you're you're pretty educational. Um, yeah, and and but, but the thing it's is, boring, you know. But it, yeah. it, it, you know, in Twitter world, it's boring. But you know, that's kind of what the the people who need the help, yep. that need to read. Yeah, you're educational. I try to be supportive. Um, I mean, a certain amount of of attention getting is is like a necessary evil to reach the most people, right? Yeah. But I think I think there's a huge difference between engagement crack and engagement crack that is highly unethical, like the lowest hanging yeah. fruit. There's a huge difference. Um, you can take a strong stance on something and know that it will rile people up, and that's okay. But there's a difference between I take a strong stance on something and I belittle and abuse other people to further myself. There's such a yeah. huge jump between those two things. There's no question. And anybody who says otherwise, they're just lying to themselves. They know they know when they're they know when they're sadistically inflicting psychological harm on other people just for self advancement. Um, yeah, I would call bullshit on anybody who said otherwise. Um, they're yeah. welcome to take it up with me because right. I'm not afraid to talk about it. Um, but yeah, uh, you're, you're not, you're not one of the bad guys. I, I've followed you long enough to know for sure that that's not the case. Um, oh, thank you. Nutri so nutrition, right? Now they, this pamphlet, I don't agree with everything about it, but it does say that you should prepare fresh food or frozen food with very little in the way of added sugar or fat or additives. Um, the nutritional information is a hundred percent you know, isn't a hundred percent. There's a lot of emphasis on fruits and vegetables, which it's a government, it's a government document, right? I'm guessing, um, but they, they get some which... things right though. They talk about omega three fats to protect your, you know, your heart and your brain, um, which obviously if omega three fats are important for your brain, your brain is where mental and emotional health come from, right? Sleep is for your brain. Omega three is for your brain. Like, the brain is the mind, <laughs> so take care of it. Um, I, drink more fluids, absolutely. I mean, the, people, you know, people. It says here that people need two to three liters of fluid each day, ideally from like water or other high water sources like milk, something that your body can actually take the water from easily. And I, I'm a hundred percent with that too. I mean, I I know plenty of people in real life that never pour themselves a glass of water, like ever, yeah. like weeks could go by, they don't drink a glass of water. I'm one of those people. Um, and what I do is like, cause I just won't ever get up and go and get it. Um, you know, it's just, I just, just don't bother. Um, so I advise if, if anyone doesn't get enough water, buy one of these, this holds two liters. Um, I don't know what you need to search, but there's loads of them on Amazon. Just search like huge water bottle or something. Uh, I think it's a gallon actually, which I think, I think it's 2.2 .2 liters. Um, and I just fill that up once in the morning and make sure I drink that. Um, and just keep it with me because if I have it with me, I just find out of boredom, if nothing else, just picking it up and just drinking from it. Um, and then when I go to the gym, I, I need water then. So I make sure I have water in the gym as well. And then that gets me to my three liters. Yep. Absolutely. You, you have to have a plan. I mean, I do something similar. Like I just have a regular water bottle. But it marks how many, it, it, it holds three cups of water. And I make sure that I drink at least three or four of these every day. Like I just keep, I just keep track. And if I'm not hitting that, then I make a conscious effort to make that me, my, my main health priority for a few days to get back in the routine. Um, wh weather shifts and stuff sometimes cause you to just sort of not feel as thirsty. Have you, have you ever noticed that? Like, seasonal yeah. shifts and then you can fall out of the habit of drinking as much water so it, it's good to come back to you from time to time because um there are there are factors that affect thirst right and and how thirsty you are isn't always the best indicator of how much water you should drink I mean, in my opinion yeah and what why do you need to drink water um i'm guessing i can i mean i i kind of know the answers but you know i'm, I'm gonna go with hydrate your brain so that you have fluid around your brain protecting it um and um so that you can um your blood isn't too viscous like um thick um which is going to help you have a health, healthy blood pressure um and allow you to you know transport the nutrients and things you need around your body uh, and also for like excretion of toxins you know like 
your kidneys and are working to remove toxins from your yep. blood they need to remove it in something uh you know water is how they do that everything in the body relies on it everything like a properly hydrated body functions better in every single way um even joints and, right if your joints are yeah. properly lubricated you're gonna first of all you're setting yourself up to get hurt um even just by day-to-day -day life like we're not even talking about intense exercise like like walking around all day on poorly lubricated joints is a great way to wear out your knees, right? Um, pain and muscles. Pain. If your joints, like if your joints and muscles and stuff aren't properly lubricated or hydrated, you're going to deal with more day to day pain. Pain, especially chronic pain, can lead to depression. So this whole thing just comes around in like a full circle. Like if you're not managing, yeah. if you're not managing your health your physical health, you're going to have poor mental health and poor mental health is a tendency to, to feed uh, viciously into a cycle of poor physical health. So at some point you just got to break, you got to break the cycle. And that means you got to interrupt some of these, these points along the chain where things break down, like hydration, sleep, substances, like it, like it, you know, it, it talks here about limiting caffeine. You know, uh, you were talking the other day on here about half-life. Of caffeine if you're still drinking coffees at six o'clock at night don't expect to sleep well and if you don't sleep well you're going to need coffee to get all through the next day okay so yeah I, I tweeted out this today and this is a hypothetical question when it comes to sleep i think people should ask themselves would you prefer a life where you are energetic emotionally healthy you know physically your best highly productive for 15 hours awake every day or would you like to struggle through a 19 hour day every single day where your life degrades in quality and you're just you're just going through the motions trying to make it through day after day after day as it gets harder and harder and harder because that's yeah, the choice you're making when you don't prioritize sleep when you otherwise could i'm not talking about people who don't have a choice in the short term I'm talking about in the long term if you sacrifice two hours of sleep every day so you can get two more waking hours from, let's say, like 16-ish to 18-ish, you're getting two more hours per day. But ask yourself, are any of those 18 hours going to be good hours? Like one day, maybe. But if you do this on a regular basis, none of the 18 hours are going to be good hours. And instead, you could just sleep two more hours and you could have 15 killer hours every day where life is good. Pick and, one. Uh, yeah, and and you know you're going to be awake for more hours. You're going to you're going to be up and not sleeping through as much of life. But I'd argue that um, over, you, you'll probably won't experience as much of life anyway because uh, you won't get things done as efficiently. You won't have more free time, and uh, you know th th there's got to be some link with being um, under under rested, under recovered, and sleep deprived with dying earlier. There, there has to be. Well, and, well, of course there is. And it, like not sleeping leads to depression and anxiety. It's one of the, so this is strategies to cope, but they might as well have said, they, they could have reversed it, said, here's a recipe to be depressed and anxious. Do the reverse of all these things. Don't sleep. Yeah. Abuse drugs, right? Eat a poor diet. Don't exercise because you'll be chronically ill. You'll be mentally and emotionally um in a bad place your hormones will be all out of whack because you're never sleeping you don't eat right you don't get all any of the nutrition your body needs to function and so on and so forth and all these things will will just feed into each other if you if you do the opposite of the recommendations in here it would be a miracle if you weren't depressed it, you know or or anxious so like i guess i guess the the thing is is that people should probably consider auditing their life right if you if you're not feeling well, um, I mean I'm not saying it's your fault. I just want to clarify before I'm saying I'm not saying it's your fault. Um, I've definitely had patches in the last few years, and especially this year, there was a period of time which, like, I was getting a little grim. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, you know, I had some challenging days in or weeks uh, where I fit some of these these uh, symptoms. And I gotta say, if I'm being honest, looking back, I wasn't making the best choices. You know. I wasn't sleeping enough and I wasn't eating as well as I should for a while there. I was really digging into the to the vice foods 
um, I was drinking ridiculous amounts of coffee, like ridiculous. I even had a few alcoholic beverages, which would have been like my usual yearly allotment. Um, so if you're feeling depressed or anxious, as hard as it may be, the first thing you should probably do is, is figure out if you're, if you have good, uh, clean, healthy habits around the maintenance of your mental health, because if you don't, that would be the first place to start. These are self-management tools. And one of those is exercise, right? Um, that This is one of those reasons I say, you know, it's not a bad idea to hire a coach because someone like Rob or myself, we would unwind these things. We would, we would look through your life. We would say, it's not just about, it's not just about an exercise plan or nutritional guidance. It's like, it's lifestyle habits, right? It's sleep. It's, it's substance stuff. We'll even, you know, one of the things you, you even need to work through with a client is like, how are they handling their social relationships? Because the added stress of, of your personal life, maybe being out of alignment can really undercut your ability to, to move forward in, in your physical health. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know, like your body doesn't, understand the different types of stress and you know stress it reacts in the same way no matter what the cause of the stress is you know it releases stress hormones like you know cortisol um which is catabolic you know when you're in that state you're going to be more likely you'll, you'll be breaking down muscle tissue you know it's going to be hard to build it um and um you know that that could just be financial stress that could be uh, marital stress that could be not sleeping enough which is stress um your body doesn't understand the causes it just knows that it's stressed for some reason and it releases um the hormones which are designed to keep you alive um that that response is a survival mechanism but it's not supposed to be something which is ongoing for months and years it's supposed to just keep you alive in that moment until you can get away from that thing that's causing you the stress uh, which you know back in the in the day would have been you know the example that always gets used is the saber-toothed tiger uh, which is going to kill you um, so you can you can run away uh, those hormones help you to to flee that situation or fight and hopefully win um, but yeah living living in that situation every day is you know it's, it's not a recipe for human health if you're if your adrenaline is constantly on if you're in a perpetual state of like non uh non-balance with certain physiological systems the eventually the, the toll will be paid uh like permanent damage could be done um you know it, I, it's like they were talking about with, with substance abuse like you're eventually rewiring the way your your brain responds to certain stimuli right how it how it processes certain emotions and stuff if every time you face a certain negative emotion you treat yourself with alcohol then soon you can't be sad or whatever without alcohol or alcohol automatically makes you sad because you're always sad when you drink right it's the same kind of thing with uh with a stress response like if you get stressed right to the max for everything all the time you're now a highly anxious person everything in life is about high anxiety yeah so you got to bring that back down um one of the tools that suggests is relaxation right? We all, we, people talk about meditation and, and all that kind of stuff. But one of the things I like about this booklet is it um, settles the misconception that sitting down at the end of the day in front of your TV and watching television is relaxation because it's not right. Um, sitting in front are you, are you think, are you going to say about how, you know, if you watch, if you watch a crime thriller or like an action movie or something, it's all going to like stimulate you and um, kind of no. This not stress, is not, content not, not, agnostic. Yeah. Content agnostic. Sitting on your phone, scrolling Twitter before you go to bed at night is not relaxing. It's not you. You need time where your mind isn't being forced to solve any problems or read any any anything. You know, um, it's a little different. Maybe if it's like like a book. In my like, this is just my personal opinion. But if you're sitting reading a book to quiet your mind and then you go to sleep afterwards i always find that quite good there's no there's no blue light there's no uh hyper stimulation none of that you know that 
like you said, none of that dopamine dopamine fix coming at you. And it's a chance for, for your subconscious to work and provide imagination. There's no pictures, none, none of that. All that has to come from you. So it actually lets your mind work kind of behind the scenes. It's not, it's, it's a little less passive, but at the same time, it's less stressful. Works. Yeah. It always works to send me to sleep. If I'm tired, I'm never going to fall asleep laying in bed, scrolling Twitter. I will not fall asleep doing that. But if I get out a Kindle um, and it's one of those ones, which doesn't, is not, not backlit. And I've just got like dim light in the room. I'll fall asleep pretty quickly if I'm tired. Yep. I won't be able to read it, to read it without falling asleep. Yeah, same here. I've started uh, reading again, finally. Um, I fell out of the habit when I had little children. I used to be a voracious reader. Um, and I've just started reading, you know, just like novels at bedtime. And it, is, it makes a huge difference. It's way superior to, to um, watching YouTube or scrolling Twitter or any of that stuff. Far better. I've, it's, I've never been a meditator, but I feel like this is the closest thing for me is, is to read a good book. Uh, it can't be about yeah. or anything. It can't be anything where I feel like I must uh, absorb any of the information. It needs to just be pure recreation, just a break from my brain. But that seems to work. But yeah, is not relaxation to be on your device at the end of the day. Like if you come home from a hard day's work and then you like hop on the computer and play video games for four hours, not relaxation does not no. qualify according to the health standard. <laughs> and some people, I've been, in, I've been in that addiction as well, um, especially in my university days, where if I was out and away from from the games console, I would be looking forward to getting back. And like, it'd be the first thing I did, like get in, unlock the door, the door open, shut, straight straight to the chair, turn it on, and then I'm there, I'm there for hours with my Coca-Cola. Um, <laughs> And <laughs> that, that is just, to me, it was helping me relax, um, but it's not actually relaxing. You've, I've got this caffeine and sugar coming in and I've got these like flashing images and, um, you know, the content as well, you know, you, you, you have to be quite um, switched on and like alert and, you know, on high alert for hours on end. Um, it's just, it's just not relaxing. Um, and even just your I mindset, like you, you were, you were all wound up to go do it too. That, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. that d d didn't sound relaxing before you even described what the game was like. Yeah. Like, like that's the thing, you know, if, if you're hopped up to do it, that's not relaxing you. That should be your fir first clue. It's not real. It's not relaxing you. If you have a desperate yeah. need to do the thing that gets you that gets you anxious in and of itself it does not count as relaxation yep i agree and just while we're talking about devices um i think that a lot of people could benefit from just doing an audit of who they follow um on various social media um instagram is, should definitely be one of those channels where where people audit what they follow um twitter as well because people um put out it's instagram's getting better it's getting more positive and they're doing something's happening on there where i see i seem to be seeing a lot more of these positive posts than i used to where people say stuff like my life isn't perfect all the time here's here's instagram and here's reality i see that a lot now um but um there's still the case where you could end up comparing your life to other people and comparing comparing stuff i find it on twitter when i see someone saying oh you know um I just have just got my like dividend income just got my rental income from my 12 properties i own just got my uh coaching income and i sold my info product um and something else and i've made 200 grand already this month and it just makes makes you feel crap and it's probably not true anyway but um you know it, it does get you comparing yourself and thinking oh I, i'm not doing all that so yeah uh, even if I'm it were true do. right even if it were true it's like it doesn't do you any good to look at it, somebody tweeted about the other day about oh it was, i know it was, it was jason any man fitness he tweeted beginners see the guy who's been in the gym for like forever and they're like what do you what do you do and they they tell them and they're like i gotta go do that and what they don't catch is that that guy's on like his 20th year right lifting and so they're asking the wrong person what the next step is yeah the person asked the next step is the person that's on year two right what worked for you to get you from year zero to year one or year two? Not the guy 
the guy who's on year 20, he doesn't even remember what year one was like probably anymore. Yeah. Um, and so it's the same thing with these people you're unfairly comparing yourself to. Even if that's what you want out of life, you're not going to go from zero to that overnight anyway. So there's no point in fixating too heavily on it and beating yourself up about your, your, your relative position to that person. Because even if that's your goal, you know, you got a whole lot of steps from A to Z that you have to cover before you get there. And if you spend all your time worrying about how you haven't gotten there yet, you're never going to do the, any of those steps. You're just going to feel bad. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, the, the people in the gym talking to the guy who's been there for 20 years, they need to ask him what he, what he did when he was first in the gym 20 years ago, not what he's doing now. Um, and he probably looked like them at the start, you know, not, or not too different and went through a period of doing a lot of different things over 20 years. Um, but if he's done well over 20 years, he's been applying, you know, the same principles throughout, um, you know, and, and the actual tactics and specifics of what he's doing right now aren't what's relevant. It's the thing that's been applied the whole time, which is probably consistently showing up, um, eating well and progressively overloading and recovering well. Exactly. And everything everything else is just the details. Uh, so people just need to focus on those fundamentals, really. Yeah, it's not it's not sexy to hear it, but the truth of the matter is it's a slow process. And the people who have success, and this is probably true with basically everything else of value in life, uh, although I can't speak to all of those things because I got more success or more experience failing at some of those other things than I have succeeding at this point. That's okay. Um, is... The, the key to it is to being okay with the fact that the progress is very, very slow, right? It's, it's a, like, it's being okay with the fact that you're going to have to put a lot of time and effort into anything that you want to see success on. I was saying this to somebody the other day, but like, I'm, a, I'm entering my seventh year of lifting weights. Uh, like, probably only like my fifth year of doing it with any kind of intelligence or, you know, whatever, but my seventh year. And I'm only now at a point where I consider myself strong, like where I'm happy with what I've, uh, what I've achieved. And now everything I achieve after this point or pretty close to everything I achieve after this point will be like beyond what any of my expectations ever were. Seven years. Yeah. So, it's not going to happen for anybody else in six months. They, they just, it's just a fact. Like it, like if you want that, you have to make peace with the fact that your, your road is going to be long. Enjoy the process. It's going to be a long one. Agree. I'll put a link to this PDF in the comments yeah. for everybody. Um, if you have, you know, questions or concerns about uh, your your mental health. Uh, first of all, like go see a mental health professional or like your doctor, right? Um, I mean, you could try first some of the strategies that are listed here. I mean, it's being specifically recommended by a government health authority. So I'm not overstepping saying give some of these things a try. But if that doesn't work, you should definitely go see a professional and get some help but in the event that you do a simple life audit and you realize you know yeah i have some really you know bad habits i need to clean up to be my best self uh and you want some help with that get a coach like rob and i are both available but there are also plenty of other great ones um if if neither of us are to your taste but you somehow still trust our opinion i'm sure we could both recommend like three to five other guys or 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 girls that you might like working with. Yeah. Um, Just like, don't don't um, go with or don't buy the product um, from the person who insults you and and you know calls calls you weak um, just because you haven't figured it out yet. Um, because yeah, that's not going to work. Yeah, stop re rewarding that kind of don't re don't pay people to abuse you. That's step one for good mental health. Don't pay anyone to talk down to you or belittle you or abuse you. Um, if you reward that kind of behavior, you'll just get more of it. You get what you accept, right? You get even more of it if you roll, if you incentivize it. So if you don't like being if you don't like being treated that way, don't pay people to treat you that way. Yep. 
Yeah. It's a message we can all agree on. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm guessing people people pay it pay for it and buy it because <laughs> I see a new product every every week with with that kind of uh, marketing and sales copy. So uh, yeah, Seth, yeah, it's, it's, it's Seth and Fear always sell, right? Yeah, they, they always have. Like it's universal marketing. I mean, the the thing is, is that it takes conscious awareness to break out of that, like to not be attracted to those things. Uh, you know, we're all kind of like moths to a flame. Like, you know, somebody, somebody hits on those fears, those deep rooted insecurities and it gets your attention. And then even better than they can promise a fix to get out of it. Well, plenty of people can help you get out of it. Not all of them feel the need to stick a hot poker in you first and get you all riled up to have that happen. You already know you need help. So go seek help that is just going to start helping you from day one. Be positive um, and have your best interests at heart. Uh, and on that note, I hope everyone is having a much better uh, 2020. Take care of your mental health. And uh, I think we're just going to we're gonna sign off because it's late where Rob is and he, he needs his precious sleep. He's only got three months left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> three months until um, baby number two. So I'm, I'm going to get that, getting that sleep in now. Uh, I've got to bank it now. Um, although it's still not going to be that much. Uh, ho hopefully though, hopefully. Uh, Do you know the exact yeah. due date? Yeah. Well, so like yeah, early to be... mid December, this guy's yeah. got a lot of loving messages on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably even I more for his wife. I'm, I'm wondering if I'm going to be able to keep up, um, keep up the content on Twitter. Now I'll, I'll find a way I can't, I haven't come this far to stop so you know i'm pretty sure if you I'll took find a, a way to make it fit in if you took a couple of weeks off it probably wouldn't hurt you too bad that's true it'd be good for my mental health yeah it would be all right well it, it's Thanks, been Tim. great talking to you man uh as always yeah yeah and uh, we, i already enjoyed this one yeah me too uh, we should uh we should do some more stuff like this for sure yeah i agree okay all right cool all have right, a good I'll one chat to you later